Hi, I'm Jared from The Broken Seal, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite Kickstarter that I've gotten. When I heard about this prompt, I debated on including games that were on Kickstarter that I didn't back but then got later on. Uh, I have a few of those games which I really enjoy, but I figured also I've gotten games from GameFound, uh, wherever else, so I restricted it down to just games that I backed on Kickstarter, got, and then liked. So these are runner-ups. We have Nemesis, we have Here to Slay, we have Sentinels of the Multiverse, and we have Twisted Fables. Um, there are other ones that have come like recently, but I just haven't gotten a chance to play them, or ones that have come that I just haven't a chance to play either. So I'm not including those on this list because I won't be able to speak to how much I enjoyed them or why I enjoyed them. But for these four, the reason why they're on the list is because not only did I feel like I got my money's worth out of backing it, but I'm genuinely happy that I backed it because I got, you know, special things for them or I got to play the game. I got to help make a game, you know, as much as my drop in the bucket was that I enjoyed. So first, let's go over the ones that I didn't pick as my favorite. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Nemesis. Now, the reason why Nemesis isn't at my top is because I've played the game. I enjoy the game. Madi and I, if you've seen the channel before, we actually have some gameplay of it. Um, we really enjoy the game. It's just that I feel like this in and of itself is good for me. I don't need anything else. I know they had the recent um, second expansion that came out. Um, I didn't get that. I also didn't get all the content for this because this was kind of early in my Kickstarter career. So I got it, but I didn't go like full on in on it. Um, but Regardless, I enjoy it. It's just that it's not my favorite. The one, one of the main reasons is that it is a little bit long to play. Uh, second, I've never really gotten to experience like the trader mechanics. Like even if someone's trying to, because the end objective is pretty much the same unless your objective is to die. So it's kind of hard for me to to do both the traitorous mechanics and also make sure the ship stays alive and also make sure you stay alive that the ship doesn't become too overrun so like there's a lot of things going on with it and i don't feel like the trader mechanics really get to shine through so that's why that's not on my top next is here to slay now here to slay you'll see that we've played many many times on our channel uh, i've also played it many times outside of this channel it's one of the games that i bring to people if they're new to gaming or if they just want something really quick or something cute to play because here to slay fits all of those things it checks off a lot of boxes and it's a, just a genuinely fun game the reason why it's not my favorite Kickstarter pick is because Here to Slay is very casual. Um, you can just sit down. Like I mentioned, you don't really need to have a lot of people. You don't need to have people who are experienced with playing board games. You just need to have people who are willing to play board games and they can learn and play Here to Slay. One of the examples I can give, uh, Madi's mom and brother came and visited. We played this. They both had never played before and they got into it very easily. So they were not, you know, uh, well, her brother is somewhat of a harder gamer. Yeah, let me just leave all that out. So it's one of the games that I usually use to introduce people to board gaming, especially more like non-traditional or no, especially modern board games, because it touches on a few things. But again, it's just very casual and it's not something that I like have a pressing desire to play probably because i played it so much but if someone were to sit down and say hey i know board games i don't need something entry level what do you want to play it's not going to be here to slay that's why it's not at the top of my list so then we get down to the final two from these two i've played both of these a lot and i enjoyed both of these we have gameplay of both of these both uh well for sentinels and multiverse we're multiverse we have solo gameplay as well as two-player gameplay. And then for the Twisted Fables, we have two-player gameplay up uh, with Mark and I, as well as Madi and I. Everyone who's played these two games, love them. Um, Set of the Multiverse, if you're not familiar with it, is kind of similar to Marvel Champions. You play as a superhero, you have cards for that superhero, and then you fight both the uh, villain and their henchmen or minions or whatever you want to call them or whatever they may be called for that one but also the environment. The environment could have bad things that happen to you, good things that happen to you, etc. But at the end of the day, it's very good at doing what it does. It's supposed to tell a story of a superhero team fighting together 
against odds, be it the environment or the villain, and getting the job done. Even if you get knocked out, you're not dead. You're just flipped over to another side and you can still participate in the game and try and help your teammates still win. Um, so like I said, I really enjoy Sentinels of the Multiverse, whereas Twisted Fables, Twisted Fables is a spin on the fables that we grew up playing, uh, reading, watching, listening to. So they have Alice in Wonderland, Mulan, um, uh, Red Riding Hood, The Matched Girl, etc. They take all of these things and then they put them into a fighting game. It's a essentially a 2D fighting game that's played out on a board game. So there's a lane where people can go back and forth or around through things like that. But there are limitations of it being a fighting game. So like you have to get close to your opponent unless you're a ranged, uh, a ranged fighter. And if you are a ranged fighter, you have to stay away from your opponent. Um, there are different mechanics for each fighter which make them feel unique. So for instance, I played Mulan. Mulan has the ability to build up key and then also defend herself off turn versus Red Riding Hood who is a, uh, she fights with guns and she wants to be further away from her opponent depending on which way you go because not only are there different ways that each character plays, but there's also the mechanic of each character has three different skill trees, essentially, movement, attack, and defense. So depending on which skill tree you go down early on in your game, because it is a deck builder, so you build a deck every time you go to play between basic cards that allow you to move, attack, defend, or a wild, and then the cards from your specific Fables deck, that's what makes up how you play that match so you know you could play with the same characters but each time go down a different path and it'll be a different fight especially because it just comes down to also how your cards are drawn so after all of that talking you might say so what is your actual final tick pick between these two between these two i'm actually going to give it to sentinels of the multiverse so sentinels of the multiverse like i've already discussed is just a very fun game um, I got it because I really enjoy Cham Marvel Champions. Madi doesn't really like it, and I've had another friend who played it who's kind of like meh on it. So it's really Marvel Champions is a solo experience for me. Versus Sentinels of the Multiverse, I've had both friends try it, both Madi and my other friend try it, and they love it. Um, I also enjoy it. Now, the only critique that I have about Sentinels of the Multiverse, which I've actually seen people discuss for the expansion, is that this is a little too easy. Um, I played through all of the available villains, uh, in the definitive edition, which I do want to specify since this is the definitive edition, um, there's already content for this game out. This game's been out for a long time. This just revised the rules and also made some tweaks to the rules to make it more playable. So yeah, they've had a chance to you know correct some mistakes over the years, but I feel like with this one, maybe they didn't want to have people lose right out or they didn't want to have people have a, un have a I don't know, a boring time playing it. But regardless, this one's a little too easy for me. Um, after playing through all of the available villains on their hard modes, I never lost any of the fights that I did. Um, they do have another level of complexity that you can add in the events where it's kind of like uh, a legacy, not a legacy, not legacy at all, but a adventure basically where you go through the available uh, villains, but you play them uh, with an event that's going on that modifies the gameplay somehow. So I haven't done that yet. But regardless, I've played through what they do have. Um, each villain has an advanced mode. It just wasn't super, I don't know, for, for, my, for me and my experience, it never got me to the point where, wow, I'm really gonna lose this game. There were a few times when I fought it, uh, especially fighting the matriarch, but it never got to the point where I didn't think that I could pull it out some which way, which again is something I do make me feel like I'm a part of a, you know, a superhero team. Superheroes, at least in most media, always get the, uh, get the job done, always get their man, etc. So this game definitely made me feel like that. I just would like a harder experience as well as more villains, more heroes, etc. Um, luckily for me, I know that there's more coming along because not only has the second Kickstarter just ended, the Rooks and Renegades, I believe it was, um, which I did back, but they have already had content for this game for years, so we already know what's going to be available if they were to make, you know, the definitive edition run for all of their content, let alone new content that they might add, which I hope that they do because it just makes it fun. Um, so anyway, 
My favorite Kickstarter that I've backed, received, and played is Sentinels of the Multiverse. Thank you all for watching. You can leave a like, comment, or even subscribe. You can also check out our description for more information about us. Bye.